Hello there, my name is The Flying Rodent, and this is my Let's Play of Skyrim on Legendary Difficulty. Uh, for the last few videos, <laughs> we've been very honed in and specifically focused on trying to max out crafting skills. Um, I'd just like to say, <laughs> before we do anything else, uh, that if you are playing this build, you don't need to hone in as much as this particular build is doing. Once again, this is meant to be an open-ended build. Um, you're meant to be able to you know, go off and then explore the land and complete whatever quests that you like with this build. You do not to be as, as laser focused on maximizing the crafting skills as quickly as I'm doing with this build. Um, but uh, I figure that to try and keep this series uh, to a reasonable length, it's already quite long, um, that I'll just cover the bits that I've covered in the guide and the only bits that I specifically covered in the guide really are, um, are the bits where you, you go out of your way to do the specific things to maximize crafting skills. So that's what we are doing in this Let's Play series and once again you could go off and do whatever quests that you wish to do in your playthrough of this build. Uh, with that out of the way, what do we have left to do? So we have currently We've now got enchanting to a hundred. We've got the extra effect perk uh, We've got a reasonable amount of alchemy training now. We've got alchemy to seven. We've got, no, that's not archer alchemy We've got alchemy to 69 um, And we have quite a lot of perks free and the reason why we have quite a lot of perks free is because we've actually now got something called the Jedi Fast Travel Set that has allowed us to power level alteration to 100 by using telekinesis and fast traveling to another location, which is a very cheap and contrived and arguably exploitative way of leveling, but it is uh, technically the fastest way to level in the game. Uh, so we have used that to our advantage. Um, the Jedi set being this lot here, which is quite simply a set that reduces alteration costs down to zero, which means that we can infinitely pick stuff up with telekinesis and then fast travel places, which is why we've got this, uh, this thing where we can view objects from quite far away. Because this is, this is actually a benefit of using telekinesis. Um, you can kind of use it like binoculars to view, to view, um, items, because you can, you can see the properties of items and from quite far away, uh, but you can't actually pick them up from this far away. I oh, actually, I stand corrected, you can. Whee! Alright, um, sorry lady. So yeah, uh, yep, <laughs> telekinesis is a fun spell. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make our first crafting set. Now in the guide, um, I recommended that you, you try and make eight crafting sets under the effect of Enchanted Elixir. Um, on the Switch, which is what I originally wrote this guide on, this is probably more feasible because you can rename items and it pauses the game. And it turns out that on PC, that is not the case. So um, I'm going to have to put a little amendment into my guide saying, FYI, if you're on PC, um, then uh, yeah, you won't be able to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to collect some clothing items and soul gems to make our first uh, alchemy set. Um, so yeah, in the guide I recommend that you basically, once you've got enchanting to 100 and you've got extra effect and you've got the enchanting elixir, that you try and make eight items in 60 seconds under the effect of enchanter's elixir. Um, I think that's that's not reasonable to do on the PC, but in any case we don't really need to do that with this character anyway Because what we did is we also went well, that should be named something else But we went out of our way to make the mid-game boots gloves and ring uh, Of a slightly lower power level before we did before we got our hands on the Sallow Regent Black Book and decided to use the Elixir. And this is something that I have advertised that you can do in the guide. You can make the mid-game boots, gloves and ring, uh, which is just clothing gloves, clothing boots and any sort of ring uh, that have these particular properties. So the boots have fire and frost resistance, the gloves have fortify archery and fortify magicka, and the ring has fortify archery and fortify conjuration. And these are designed to augment the items that you already have, which at this stage will be Mage's Circlet, Savos Aaron's Amulet, and Archmage's Robes, which are all College of Winterhold items. 
Um, so basically, fortify spell casting a little bit, fortify conjuration a little bit, and do more damage with the bow. Um, and if you get, if you make these as soon as you've got the extra effect perk, and you plan on doing some more things before you maximize out the other crafting skills, um, then it might be a good idea to fast track these items because then you can actually use them. You don't just make them for their own sake. Uh, so that we made these to, you know, in theory make make it easier to obtain the Black Book, the Sallow Region, because we do a little bit more damage with the bow. Um, so you can choose to do that in your game, and you can fast track these items if you wish. Uh, so what we're going to do now, um, I also advertise that you can make the first crafting set to include Fortify Smithing, um, to include Fortify Smithing enchantments. We're not going to do that because we're actually not going to plan on doing smithing until the very end. I did that in the guide, so that in theory, if you wanted to do some smithing early, you could. Um, but we're not going to bother. So, what we'll need for our set is... Can we move? Good. We'll just take all this stuff up to the keep. So what we're making is purely a Fortify Alchemy set. Um, you can make it as a Fortify Alchemy, Fortify Smithing set if you want, um, which is what I've said in the guide. You could make a new mid-game set, which is also what I said in the guide, uh, but we're actually going to do a bit of a shortcut and go outside of what I said in the guide. And our first crafting set is going to purely just Fortify Alchemy, because that's what all we are going to use it for. And then we're not actually going to make any Fortify Smithing crafting or crafted items until we reach our final stage. Uh, which means that we're going to want alchemy to be 100 as well. So we will go over here, and this is what we're going to use our enchanters, enchanted elixir for. Um, so, yeah, anyway, in the guide I advertise that you put all of your unnecessary clothing items uh, in a container so that... so that, you know, they're not, they're not getting in the way. Um, so we are actually not going to need any aprons. We're only going to need one hat. Uh, we're going to use, we'll use these hide braces uh, for our for our first crafting set. So that means the gloves can go away. Um, so we need a hat, some braces, a ring and a necklace. So we're just going to keep this hat, this necklace, this ring, these braces, and we're going to put every other type of item that we can't enchant, or that we could enchant that will take up annoying space in the menu, in here, and I accidentally put my other silver ring in here, which I didn't mean to do, Ipsy daisy Now, this container is a bit odd because some of your stuff then comes up as stolen, um, but then if you look at it, when you've got it, it doesn't come up as stolen. Um, so as long as you're in sneak mode and there's no one watching you, in theory there's no issue putting things in this particular container behind the Arcane Enchanter in Dragon's Reach. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that we could feasibly enchant oh, yeah, these dying daggers. <laughs> I think that's everything that we could feasibly enchant. So now, if you go over to the enchanting menu, and you go to the reason why we do that, if you go into the enchanting menu and you look at what items you can now enchant, you've got this nice, neat list of things. You don't have this giant list of apparel just clogging up the menu. Um, that doesn't, that's not here anymore. So you know, it can, it can look like this. <laughs> Uh, if, if you haven't bothered to, to put the things in there. And so, yeah, if you wanted to try and do a Fortify Smithing, Fortify Alchemy set, uh, and tried to do it in 60 seconds using the using the Enchanter's Elixir, this is a good idea to do. We've just done it to demonstrate uh, that you can do it. Um, and what we might do as well is, if you wanted to temporarily make uh, one of these crafting sets and you wanted to name it so that... Um, it appeared in a nice, you know, in a nice array in your inventory will show how to do that as well. Um, because the way that naming works is that if you were to go and rename an item, uh, the, the text marker starts at the beginning, which means that it gives you the opportunity to basically type something at the beginning and then leave the rest of the name intact. And in your inventory, if things are going to be displayed in alphabetical order, so you can just basically shove a bunch of A's at the beginning of the title for an item, and then they'll all appear together. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so we are going to... We're going to save first. Quick save will do. 
Um, and then we are going to drink our Enchanter's Elixir and we're going to make four Fortify Alchemy items. Now, as well as our Enchanter's Elixir, I just remembered, we're going to want our Azadal set on, which means we're going to want Boots, Gauntlets, Helmet and Ring, so that when we go now to our Magic Effects, we should have two different effects here that fortify enchanting. So we've got Azadal's Genius that increases enchanting by 10 points. And then we also have Seekers of Sorcery, which makes enchantments 10% more powerful. Now, even though these both say 10% or 10 points, this has a lot more of an impact than this. Because the in increasing the enchanting skill by 10 points... Um, increases the magnitude of a 40% item by 2% because of the way that enchanting points seem to scale. Because I believe the, the you've got five perks that fortify the effect of enchanted items by a flat 100% bonus. So you've got basically 100 enchanting plus your 100% bonus. And then this will increase enchanting by 10 points, so that'll be a 210% bonus. But uh, this thing here... The Seeker of Sorcery just is is a percentage increase, so it's actually a 10% increase on everything else that you have. Um, so this this will increase it from 200 to 210, and then this will increase it by 10% of 210, uh, which is which will that'll increase it to 231 percent enchanting skill off of your base. Uh, so yeah, just some some quick maths there for those interested in quick maths. Uh, either way, what it will mean, what it will look like <laughs> to us making items is that we should be able to make uh, four fortify alchemy items at a 32% magnitude, I believe. I think that's what it is. So let us drink the Enchanter's Elixir and see if that's the case. So now you've got 60 seconds to make your items. All right. So we'll start with the hat, and we're going to go to... All we're doing is fortify alchemy. You can go alchemy and smithing, but we only need to do alchemy. Uh, so when you rename... Yes, yeah, so 32%. When you rename it, you can go AA space, and then it will appear at the front of your inventory. Done. Um, so then you need to press enter. And that will pause it, and then we're going to go fortify alchemy again. And now we'll go to the necklace, rename it to AA space, enter, and then we're going to craft it. So yeah, this is a this is a way that you can at least rename items so that they appear in a spot in your inventory. Uh, when you go to when you guys go to make your late game item sets, if you were to try and make them using the titles that I suggested in the guide, um, unfortunately you wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, so you'll have to like. You'll instead have to use a trick where you delete, you, you use the delete key to sort of delete the first, the first name and then type in the title. So if these, if I was to make, you know, turn Elven Gauntlets into Hellfire Gauntlets, then you would use the delete key on your PCs, which deletes things in front of the cursor. Uh, if you have that key, Macs don't have that luxury. Uh, but you use the delete key to then delete the first name and then retype the first name, and then you would enchant it. Um, so yeah, I will include both of those things on the guide. So the, the fact that you can you can just quickly type AA enter, and then you can appear, make it all appear at the front of your inventory if you so want. Um, or alternatively, if you wanted to rename something, probably the best way to do it if you wanted to make it appear in the same part of your inventory but not necessarily call it AA something, is to use the delete key to remove the first name and then go from there. All right, so anyway, we managed to make all of that, hopefully, within 60 seconds, and so here we are. So now we have our quote unquote first crafting set uh, right here, so there you go. So I've got a hat, we've got a necklace, we've got a ring, we've got braces, and they all increase the magnitude of crafted potions by 32%. So that is our quote unquote first crafting set. So we're eventually gonna end up with three crafting sets, um, and you only make your second and third crafting set once alchemy has been maxed. So what we might do now is we might actually try to max out alchemy. Um, we could wait until we get to 75 alchemy and do another batch of enchanting, um, but that's expensive and it's time consuming to go and buy daggers and enchant daggers, and I've done enough of that in this playthrough, so we're going to see if we can kind of shortcut it because what you can do with alchemy is you can make a boatload of money from alchemy um so what i might do is uh is i'm going to make a few potions and then i'm going to try and use that to um to fund alchemy a little bit 
Uh, yeah. So what we might do, first thing we want to do is we want to... Where did our little cabbage go? I wonder if that's still over here. We catapulted the cabbage in this direction of the, of the start of the video, and that was kind of funny. I wonder if it ended up anywhere interesting. Uh, is that it? Yeah. All right, we're going to use that again. Um, so we want to get some more perks for crafting. So we're gonna we're just gonna do this little this little silly trick again, and we're gonna power level alteration again. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna don our Jedi set like so. And then we're going to go and get the Thief Stone, because that is the best stone for uh, maximizing alchemy. So yeah, up until this point, we have been using... We haven't really mentioned our standing stones much, but we have been using the Mage Stone for the entire game. So like, you know, right back at level 1 or level 2, after we exited Helgen, we walked down here and we got the Mage Stone, and we've just left it at the Mage Stone up until now, because the main skills that we've been focusing on are, you know, Conjuration, Restoration, and Enchanting, which are all which are all magic skills. So that's, that's well and good, having the Mage Stone for that. Um, but now that we want to maximize Alchemy, we want to change it to the Thief Stone. Um, and through the process of doing this, uh, we got alteration to 92, which means we're going to get some more levels, which means some more perks, and uh, yeah, there we go. And now we can feasibly get some more alchemy training if we want, um, because we've leveled up. So now we're going to get the Thief Stone. Now, um, for alchemy specifically, it is better to use the... It's better to use a Fortify Alchemy helmet or hat to increase alchemy experience than it is actually to use the ethereal crown with the lover stone on it because the value of crafted potions contributes the amount of experience you get and it turns out that this gives you more experience than having the lover stone um, so now that we have this uh, we're now going to go back to wide run uh, actually you know what we might do uh, have we got some some stuff to sell, or have we sold all of our daggers? Okay, we've sold everything. Because uh, what we might do is we might hoard some ingredients. It, would, it wouldn't hurt to hoard some more ingredients. Um, and the, the, we will go to... Maybe we'll go to Morthal to do that first. Once again, it's very unsettling that we haven't been attacked by a dragon for goodness knows how long. Um, and we might even in this video go and kill another dragon just to maybe remind the game that dragons exist. Maybe we'll go and return the hurl. The um, we'll go and we'll go back to the Greybeards actually um, and go and get the last Fuzradar word. Uh, there's normally an alchemy merchant in here. Not sure where they've gone. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? They're all standing outside because of this thing. So in Morthal, the uh, the Morthal quest is that everybody is worried about vampires um, in the town, and then you know the, the town quest is that you go and you go and remove a vampire from a lair um, who happens to be terrorizing the town. It's a pretty cool little quest actually, um, but we won't bother. Uh, so hopefully Lommy is in the Thaumaturgist's hut now. Yep. Is it Lammy? No, Lammy, not Lommy. Um, so yeah, she is an adept level alchemy trainer. Uh, if you want to get alchemy training, uh, but we don't need it for now. We're just going to buy all of her stuff. Um, and ba oh, I didn't mean to get that recipe. That's fine. And basically, what I want to do is um, is visit some alchemy merchants and hoard ingredients. I always get paranoid when I see NPCs running in town because it makes me think that there's, um, there's a dragon. Um, but we can fast travel, so there's no dragon. All right. So then we're going to go to here. Yeah, kids running around town, they don't, they don't respond to dragon attacks. They just chase each other and be, and be kids. Uh, so, yeah, I, should, I shouldn't use them as a metric for whether or not there's a dragon attacking a town. 
It's just my paranoia. All right. Um, for some reason, this person often doesn't sell stuff in here, and so you have to open this door and then like go and interrupt them as they're sitting on a bench and then ask them for stuff. Um, so yeah, just buy this stuff. All right, and then uh, we will. What's the time now? It's eleven eighteen a.m. Um, so if we go back to White Run, you probably won't still be open, or you'll be very barely open. But we'll we'll see. Actually, you know what? No, let's let's not risk it. Um, I wonder how long it takes to get to Markarth from here. Let's find out. Probably too long. But hey, it takes us five hours to get to Falkreath, so maybe some magic happens in this direction as well. It should realistically take like ten hours. Uh, and it takes seven. Alright. Um, but that means that the Alchemist in Markarth will still be open. And I don't think we visited the Alchemist in Markarth yet, but the Alchemist in Markarth is up here. The Hag's Cure. Um, and you get some some interesting some interesting reach folk uh, running the alchemy shop here. The hag's cure is here for all your discreet needs. I have potions for disease. <laughs> Comes with living to a ripe old age. People start thinking there's something magical about you. Then the insults. Still, a little knowledge of plants and potions can get you by. Not that anyone likes to admit buying things from you. See? I even have a little potion for the steward. Mind handing it over to him? <laughs> I say it should solve that problem he has. <laughs> Thank you. That's cool. So it's kind of a front that she puts on. It's just a, you know, little little cultural flavor she has for her for her store. That's actually kind of cool. So she's not like just some Nut job mystic. She uh, she actually puts it on as a front to uh, to aid her business. So there you go, smart businesswoman right here. Um, so now we have not much now, left. Um, I don't know. Deliver the stallion's potion to Rerik. Sure. Um, this this seems like a bit of a beginner quest. So this will net us a few hundred gold or something. Um, why not? Let's just do it. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Oh, and we forgot to get all of our enchanted items out of the cupboard in Dragon's Reach, so we should uh, go get that back. Oops. But our uh, first wall. Stallion's potion. I probably should have actually examined that because it, uh, it could have had some uh, interesting dialogue. So we might just might just do that because I, I kind of get the the impression that this that the stallion's potion was intended for uh, a specific purpose. Let's see what the game the game thinks of the stallion's potion. Where are we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically we just gave him Viagra. Um, let's get out of here. Yeah, uh, enjoy your Viagra, or horny goat weed, or whatever the hell I just gave you. And uh, let's go back to Whiterun. White run. Okay, so what we're going to do now 
is uh, we are going to Sorry. What we're going to do is, uh, what I suggest is the first lot of potions. We're, we're going to basically make potions and try and, and try and make our way to 100 alchemy. Um, so the thing that we're going to need first to accomplish all that is, of course, all of our ingredients. So uh, let's go and grab our ingredients now. Uh, so with any luck, we've amassed a decent weight of ingredients. So we start at 220, and once we emptied this chest, we have... 418. So we've got maybe 200, 250 pounds worth of ingredients, which is okay. Um, should get us there, uh, but but uh, I would have liked more. But we haven't we haven't really gone to to too much effort trying to trying to empty alchemists of their ingredients this run. Uh, sometimes I will uh, I've got an alchemist traveling salesman route, and then I go and visit various alchemists, and that's also on the guide. And then I'll empty them of all their alchemy ingredients, and then do that you know a few times. Um, but we're going to see if this is enough ingredients to get us to 100 alchemy. It should be enough. Um, it should be enough. So what we're going to do, first off, uh, what I like doing is I like using the ingredient revealing list of potions. Uh, what I mean by that is on the UESP, uh, so we are going to metagame a bit. Uh, on the UESP, there's a list of potions you can make with the base game ingredients that uh, reveal all of the effects of the base game ingredients, which is nice. And so I usually, I like doing that first, because then not only does it reveal what all of these fancy ingredients do, but I can also use it to then gain skill, and I'm not just wasting my time making, you know, potions out of Salmon Row or Giant's Toe or whatever. We haven't actually bothered to collect any Salmon Row on this particular run through, and we've only got four Giant's Toes. So, um, we're probably going to have to get a bit crafty with what we use to try and maximise alchemy with this collection of stuff, actually. Uh, but we'll make do. So, the list of the base game ingredients you can find on the UESP. Um, it's in my guide. I've linked it on the guide. I'm actually just trying to find it now <laughs> um, on another device so that I can use it mid run so bear with me a moment so um i'm actually looking at my own guide to try and level my own character so yes uh, in my guide on on chapter 7.7 .7 now there is a there's a paragraph that reads for the base game ingredients alone it is possible to make one of each of 65 different potions with 193 ingredients that reveal all of the effects for these ingredients the full list of potions can be found here so basically there's a list of stuff on UESP I'll post it in the link uh, to the description of the video to save me editing it in because I'd rather not spend time editing these if I if I can avoid it, because I'm not really a, a professional YouTuber. I just I just want to play. Um, so yeah, we're going to start off. The first potion on the list is a Beastian Longfin, Bleeding Crown, and Powdered Mammoth Tusk. So we're going to start there. So before we do that, we're going to ensure that we have everything that we want on. So we want our alchemy set, which we have on. Um, another thing that we want, actually, is we want to have the Black Book set to the seeker of shadows rather than the rather than the seeker of sorcery so um we're going to go and get that as well which means we need to fast travel to soul sign which is something i forgot about um so we're just gonna go and put some things in here until we can finally move We actually don't have that much ingredients at all. I'm used, I'm used to having way more ingredients than this. Um, so I, I'm slightly worried that we're not going to have enough. <laughs> um, but anyway, it will be an interesting, an interesting test. We might, we might have to make some, some potions that are, uh, that use some effects that I'm not used to making. Um, all right, that should be enough. Now we go to. We jump over to Solsheim, and the reason we need to jump over to Solsheim is because you need to go to Solsheim in order to read the Black Book Salo Regent. Um, you cannot read that book on the mainland. Um, so yeah, now we're going to switch over to... Going to read the Black Book. Yep. 
Captain Gialland does the business. Are you sure this is a good idea? And uh, then we yoink back in here, um, and we have the sorcery one. We want the shadows um, seeker, so that we're ten percent better at making potions. And then we're gonna head out. And then, with any luck, there's no dragon attack, and we're gonna head back to the mainland. Off we go. Cool. All right, and then we head back to White Run. Actually, what we should do is is probably. Oh, we should be fine. Dragon's Reach shouldn't re have reset yet. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll go to Arcadia's first because we don't need everything in Dragon's Reach just yet. All right, and we did use this as a temporary storage container, but it hasn't been 10 in game days, so it is fine. I'll pick some mountain flower on the way in, because why not? And, uh, yeah, all right, so finally, let's max alchemy. So we have... Uh, so we have one, two, three, four things fortifying alchemy, and we also have the Seeker of Shadows. Beautiful. So, once again, we're going to make the list of potions or at least one of the po one of each of the potions as many as we can from the list of identifying ingredients potions from the UESP page uh, there are 65 potions using 193 ingredients and we're going to make as many as we can um, so let's do that now and actually what we might do if we manage to make a few and they're worth a fair bit of money we might sell them to Arcadia and then buy some alchemy training because we can still technically buy some alchemy training from her uh, so the first one is a BC and Longfin, Bleeding Crown and Powdered Mammoth Task so Powdered Mammoth Task, there we go so yeah, these, these potions are intended to reveal the effects of all the ingredients so that in theory, if you wanted to return to alchemy and make stuff with alchemy, then, you know, now you at least know what a lot of stuff does. And you're not just using internet lists. Uh, but the irony of this is that, of course, you're using an internet list uh, to begin with <laughs> to try and make all of the potions. But uh, in theory, it should, you know, should keep the user slightly, um, slightly into alchemy. Um, one uses Giant's Toe, but it doesn't use the Fortify Health part of the Giant's Toe, so it's not worth a stupid amount of money. And then we've got a BC and Longfin, Human Flesh. I don't think we've got any Human Flesh. No, we don't, I don't think. Alright, so we're skipping potion number three, and we're moving on to potion number four, which is Bear Claws, Eye of Saber Cat, and Hanging Moss. I don't even have an eye of saber cat. Jesus, we don't have many alchemy ingredients. Uh, so we're missing number four. Let's move on to number five. We've got bee, bone meal, and fly amanita. All right, and then we've got bee, hist carp, and void salts. Bee. It's easy to use the arrow keys, isn't it? Hist carp and void salts. Cool. No, I don't want to quit alchemy. I want to make something. There we go. Um, then we've got, sorry, it's seven beehive husk, ectoplasm, and grass pod. So let's let's go going up. So we've got grass pod, ectoplasm, and beehive husk. Cool. All right, and then we've got beehive, husk, hawk feathers, and small pearl. Cool, and then we've got Barrett's ashes and bone meal, which we don't have, so we'll skip that one. Then we've got bleeding crown, jazz blade, grapes, and tundra cotton, so we'll start from the bottom actually, so tundra cotton... Jazz Bay Grapes and Bleeding Crown. Ah, oh, Miss Jazz Bay. Jazz Bay Grapes and Bleeding Crown. Ooh. 
Uh, once we get to 70 alchemy, we're going to sell all these potions and see if we can get some training from it. Um, blister wart, um, butterfly wing, and hag raven feathers. Um, and then one more will do it. So blue butterfly wing, blue mountain flower, and wheat. Nope. Right down the bottom. Cool. Alright. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to, to Arcadia and get some training with any luck. And actually we might buy our ingredients too. Um, so do you have any ingredients to buy? Yes you do. Thank you. Buy this. She had a bunch of giant's toast there, so that will come in handy. Um, and then we will sell some of our potions. So we might actually just sell everything that we know we're not going to use now. Um, so we're not going to use these invis potions or cure disease or more invis. We'll keep healing, fortified block. We're definitely not going to use that. Um, and then if we go to training, a couple of ranks. Uh, no, I don't have enough training to even pay for more than one rank. <laughs> this is going to be awkward. Alright, uh, Fortify Destruction, Fortify Health, Fortify Magicka, Fortify One-Handed, Fortify Restoration, Sneak. Uh, sure, we don't really use them. Um, sell that, and then Speech goes up, because why not? Another rank in Alchemy Training, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, if you had more money, then this would uh, be a bit more efficient. <laughs> uh, invisibility, we'll sell our magic potions, sell our minor healing. Uh, yeah, why not? Sell plentiful healing, we'll keep the magic card, we'll keep the plentiful stamina, regenerate stamina, and regeneration can go. Our resist potions can go, because we're not really using them. Um, yeah, and that should be enough. Now to hopefully get another rank in training. Um, not sure though. So we're going to sell them too, because we haven't really soul trapped any black souls. Uh, 2,210, yeah that's enough. Alright, cool. Uh, we're going to level up, because why not. Uh, and then... What I should have done actually is probably started taking stamina. Meh, whatever. Um, in the guide, I advertise that you take health to 500 and then you start branching out of the stamina at this level. So maybe from next level we'll start taking stamina. And that sort of is to, is to make uh, to make physical combat a bit easier to use. So from next level, we'll start taking stamina up to 200. Alright, so we were up to blue butterfly wing, blue mountain flower and wheat. So let's keep going. So we've got the next one. So we're up to potion number 14 of 65, which is blue dart wing, Deidre Heart and Nordic Barnacle. Cool. Then we have Blue Dart Wing, Pine Thrush Egg and Spider Egg. So we're going to go backwards. We're going to clear this, find Spider Eggs and go up. So Pine Thrush Egg and Blue Dart Wing. Blue Dart Wing being a type of Dragonfly. Boink. Alright, um, then we have Bone Meal, Crimson Nurn Root, and Land Lavender. We don't have any Crimson Nurn Root because we haven't visited Blackreach, so we'll skip that one. Uh, then we have Briar Heart, Hag Ravenclaw, and Tundra Cotton. Alright, and then we have. Uh, Briar Heart, Purple Mountain Flower, and Swamp Fungal Pod, and we might use the money from this to pay for another level of alchemy training. <laughs> uh, make the most of it. Purple Mountain Flower and Briar Heart again. Once we can find it. Oh, so close. Um, Alright. You know what, we'll just... See if we can pay for two ranks, actually, and then we can, yeah, give it a go anyway. <laughs> um, so then we go to training. Oh, I need to sell you stuff. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Fear, paralysis, fortify, block, resist, shock. That won't be enough for one more, will it? Sad. I don't really have anything more to sell you. Uh, damn it. You can have my arrows. That'll be enough, surely. I think I can teach you a thing or two. Yep. Thanks. All right. Now we'll keep going. <laughs> All right. And now that'll that'll conclude the amount of alchemy training we can do. Um, so, next we have... Um, so we just made the Tundra Cotton Whistle. So Briarheart, Hawk, Beacon, Pearl. So we're up to potion number 18. All right, Briarheart, Hawk, Beak, and Pearl. Yeah. Normally, if you've hoarded alchemy ingredients, you're not as finicky as we are uh, with this section. Uh, as we're being, but uh, I'm trying to maximise the amount that we have. Uh, so next we have... Um... Oh, my brain's fried. Briarheart, Purple Mountain Flower and Swamp Fungal Pot. I swear we've done that. Um, if it's not revealing anything, then we've done it. Yeah, it's not revealing anything new. Um, yeah, so we've already made it. Whatevs. Um, Alright, so Butterfly, Wing, Dragon's Tongue, Small Animals. Cool. Then Canis Root, Imp Still, and Rock Warbler Egg. Impstool starts with I, um, and then Canis Root. Cool. Uh, then Canis Root, Namira's Rot, and Spider Egg. You'll find tonics, salves, poultices, and potions on their shelves. Alright, so then we're up to... Okay, so we're up to potion 23 of 65. So yeah, this list takes a little while to get through. Um... But again, so a little little bit of time spent going through this list will mean that we know uh, what the vast majority of alchemy ingredients actually do. So if you wanted to go and experiment with alchemy ingredients for yourselves, uh, then in theory you could you could figure it out with in-game information rather than having to look up recipes on the internet. So you're, you're doing a little bit of metagaming now, so hopefully save a lot of metagaming later. Um, so that is 23, so now we want 24, which is Chorus, Eggs, Eye of Saber Cat, and Giant Lichen. Uh, we don't have any Eye of Saber Cat, so what we might just do, actually, instead of just ignoring that potion entirely, um, we're going we're gonna to use Chorus, Eggs, and Giant Lichen, and we'll just leave it at that. It's just a weakness to poison effect. That's really sad. Uh, chorus eggs, garlic, and lunar moth wing. Pretty sure we have those. Yeah, that will have an invisibility and a bunch of other stuff too. That's quite a decent potion, actually. We might we might use that to practice a bit later. Um, you know what? We haven't taken any alchemy perks. So um, yep. Yeah. Let's redo all that again, shall we? <laughs> Fuck me. Alright, so that was waste of 40 minutes. So what we're going to do now, before we do any of that, is just something we should have done right at the beginning. And that's take alchemy perks. And that's going to increase the value of our potions by a lot. And we should have done that before. This system is so annoying to use. Alright. Now we're going to try and make potions. So this is back at the start. This is probably, you know, maybe it wasn't 40 minutes we wasted. Maybe it was about 10 to 15. But, um, but yeah. We're back here. Uh, we've donned our things. Now we're going to start making potions. So we're going to go back to the start of our list. 
and we're going to start making them from potion one again but they're going to be worth a bit more this time so they should give us more experience let's try it again so ingredients thought something was missing abyssian long fin bleeding crown and powdered mammoth dusk That's a bit better. Alright. Obesian long thing, Cyridic spade tail, and giant's toe. It's actually quicker to use arrow keys than just to use the mouse wheel. Alright. Obesian long thing, Cyridic spade tail, and giant's toe. Let's go up so. Cool. Um, Abyssian long fin, human flesh, and white cap. We don't have any any human flesh, but we'll just do a Abyssian long fin and white cap uh, just to reveal this particular potion. There we go. It's a weakness to frost thing. Um, the next one is bear claws, eye of saber cat, and hanging moss. I won't do that one because you can make a bear claws, hanging moss, giant's toe potion from memory that's super expensive. Um, so we'll move on to five, which is bee, bone meal, and fly amanita. Um, and then we'll go bee, hissed carp, void salts, and bee. Just carp. Void salts. Alright, and one more. Um, beehive husk ectoplasm grass pod. So yeah, we've, we've managed to get from 69 to 70 a lot quicker than we did last time, so that's encouraging. So, grass pod, ectoplasm, and beehive husk. Cool. Alright. And now we're going to go and use these to pay for, for our training. Okay, first off we're going to buy our ingredients. Which for memory included quite a lot of giant's toes, but this time it doesn't, sad. Oh well. Um, anyway. Better than nothing. Um, so we'll sell this, 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 this. Uh, keep the healing potions, and we'll sell fortify. Ah, uh, no, we won't. We'll sell not that. Maybe fortify health and the healing potions. And then we will buy one rank, and then we'll go back to selling. And then we'll buy another rank. I think I can teach you a thing or two. And then we'll go back to selling. So you're interested in my potions and ingredients? Um, we'll keep the extreme healing and the plentiful healing and at least some stamina potions. Um, we can sell all these. Resist things and we'll sell, sure, we'll sell vigorous level and then we'll pay for another rank and then we'll go back to making potions sweet ah i forgot the fucking health stamina thing again <laughs> eh, whatever um all right we just did be his carp void salts which means we're now up to no we did be we did be high husk ectoplasm grass pod so we're up to number eight which is Beehive husk, um, hawk feathers, and small pearl. Kill. Um, Barrett's ashes, bone meal, that's not going to happen. Uh, bleeding crown, jazz bay grapes, and tundra cotton. Tundra cotton. Jazz bay. And bleeding crown. Cool. Um, and then we're gonna go one more. Blister wart, blue blood, blister wart, blue butterfly wing, and sprig and sap. Pretty sure we missed this one last time, actually. 
I don't remember making a potion with Sprig and Sap last time. Boink. Alright. And then we'll go and sell you. And then pay for another rank in training. Take a look. So if we now go to potions. Sell that, sell that. <laughs> and uh don't have enough. Oops. That's kind of awkward. I think we used arrows last time, so we'll just use arrows again. Is that enough? Eh? No, that's the wrong one. I think I can teach you a thing or two. Thirty gold okay. off. Are you kidding? Alright, we'll sell. Uh, one of you. And then we'll buy a training. A Doink! Alright, and now we physically can't, we, we can't feasibly get any more training from Arcadia. We're just going to make potions. So, thus concludes the training buying bit. Now we just make potions. So the last thing we made was Blister Ward, Blue Butterfly Wing, Sprig and Sap. So yes, UESP. Uh, UESP list of in identifying ingredient potions. We're going through it right now. We're up to potion number 12 of 65. Um, blister wart, blue butterfly ring, hag raven feathers. Alright, blue butterfly wing, blue mountain flower and wheat. Okay, Blue Dartwing, Deidre Heart, Nordic Barnacle. I sell cures for all ills, and I'll be happy to serve you. Um, Blue Dartwing, Pine Thrush, Egg, Spider Egg. Bone meal, crimson nern root, and lavender. Now we don't have crimson nern root, but we should have plenty of bone meal and lavender, so we'll just make this potion anyway to reveal the effects of these. There we go, conjuration fortification. Um, then, you know what? You could actually feasibly use that as a potion early in the game, um, if you wanted to increase the duration of your Conjuration Summons. I don't know how powerful this would be at the very beginning of the game, though. Probably only fortified by a small percentage, and then it kind of just be meh. Um, and it's not like you're really, you're really wanting Summons to be lengthy anyway. Um, early on in the game, you'd rather just keep summoning Flame Atronax on top of things so that you can maximise Flame Cloak damage. So yeah, in hindsight, maybe not. Um, but, you yeah. know. Worth the thought experiment, eh? Uh, so Briarheart, Hag Raven Claw, and Tundra Cotton. Up to 17. I offer remedies for ailments both common and rare. Do let me know if I can be of service. What? What the hell? Okay. That's, that was weird. I think I, it didn't click. Hag Raven Claw, Briarheart, and Tundra Cotton. I did waste a Briarheart doing that, which I'm not pleased about. Um, that's more like it. Um, Briarheart, Hawkbeak, and Pearl. Then Briarheart, Purple Mountain Flower, and Swamp Fungal Pod. So once again, why are we putting ourselves through this torture? Um, so that, in the event that you wanted to return to alchemy, uh, you would know what everything does, and you wouldn't have to rely on on guides on the internet to figure out which potions do what, because you will have, in theory, revealed all of the effects of your potions. Um, if you had hoarded more alchemy ingredients than I'd bothered to do, um, then you would have... 
a significantly larger collection of ingredients than me now, and it would probably mean that you're going to be able to make more of these potions. I've so far not been able to make quite a few of them, um, but I'm basically working my way through the USP list. We're up to level, we're up to number 21 now, which is Canis, Root, Imstool, and Rock Warbler Egg. Um, we're going to work our way all the way to 65. Uh, then we've got Canis Root, Namira's Rot, and Spider Egg. And the reason why we're doing this is to, you know, A, reveal all the effects, and B, get some experience and money from it at the same time, if we so wanted. Uh, charred Skeever, Hide, Mud, Crab, Kite, and Swamp Fungal Pod. So yeah, we're almost up to where we were last time, <laughs> before we forgot to take the perks. And as you can see, like, um, we've, uh, we've managed to gain more experience than we did last time, because understandably our potions are worth, are worth more. Um... We don't have an Eye of Saber Cat, and we won't bother with a Giant Lycan, so we'll go straight to the Garlic and the Lunar Mothwing. Because um, memory, the, the Chorus Eggs Giant Lycan Potion was pretty, pretty ordinary. Uh, that one's alright though. Um, chicken's Egg, Juniper Berries, and Nordic Barnacle. Chicken's Egg. Juniper Berries and Nordic Barnacle. Alright, Chicken's Egg, Nightshade, and Wisp Wrappings, so we're going to go all the way down to W now. Wisp Wrappings, Nightshade, which we should have quite a bit of, and Chicken's Egg. There we go. Uh, Creep Cluster, Dwarven Oil, and Taproot. Cool. That has a lot of effects. Uh, creep cluster, ice wraith teeth, and juniper berries. If there's anything I can help you with, you have but to ask. Uh, creep cluster, mora tapanella, and scaly fotolia. Scaly foliota. That's got a lot of things. Um, then Crimson Nurn Root, Nurn Root, and Void Salts. We don't have much Crimson Nurn Root, if any, but we do have some Nurn Root and we do have some Void Salts, so we'll make that one in case it's anything interesting. Um, then we've got Cyrodiilic Spade Tail, Jazz Bay Grapes, and Salt Pile. Salt Pile, uh, Jazz Bay, and Cerodilic Spade Tail. Um, then we've got again Cerodilic Spade Tail, uh, Powdered Mammoth Tusk, and Small Pearl. We don't have any Mammoth Tusk, so we'll just go straight to the Small Pearl. Uh, and that's what a Fortify Restoration Potion is, of course it is. Uh, if you wanted to uh, break the game, this is the potion that allows you to break the game. Uh, at some point, we'll, uh, we'll use this. We'll use this to demonstrate what it is like to break the game, uh, but not not yet. Um, then we'll go to Namira's Rot, uh, Juniper Berries, and Daedra Heart. All right, Death Bell, Salt Pile, Small Antlers. We're halfway through the list now. Um, which is good. Getting in the swing of things, and we are getting experience from doing all this. Uh, Death Bell Thistle Branch. So get rid of you two. And go straight to Thistle Branch. That's not a Thistle Branch, that is, thanks. Um, then we've got Dragon's Tongue, Dwarven Oil, and Fly Amanita. F is for Fly. Fly Amanita. Dwarven Oil. And Dragon's Tongue. Um, then we've got Ectoplasm, Red Mountain Flower, and White Cap. I offer remedies for 
Boink, and now that we've hit 80 alchemy, what we might do is we might get one more alchemy perk. Um, that way our potions are do a little bit more a bit more warmth to them. And now we've technically got all the alchemy perks that we need. Um, so that's nice. Then next up we'll make a I think we're up to Dwarven Oil, Garlic and Slaughterfish Egg. So we're up to 38 of 65. Dwarven Oil, Garlic and Slaughterfish Egg. Boink. Um, ectoplasm, red mountain flower, and white cap. No, we've done this. We did that one last, so we've got elves ear, fire salts, and juniper berries. Oops. <laughs> uh, juniper berries, elves ear, and fire salts. That's better. Alright. Um, I have saber cat, rock warbler egg, and torch bug thorax. Uh, we don't have those, so I'll skip, skip straight to Falmer Ear, Fly Amanita, and Troll Fat, which is 42 of 65. Uh, then Falmer Ear, Human Heart, and Spider Egg. We don't have any human hearts, but we do have a few spider eggs, so we'll use that. Uh, do we want Fly Amanita in our mixture though? No, probably not. Go lock picking potion. Um, then fire salts, frost salts, moon sugar. Now this I think is a pretty strong resist thing. Yeah, we go Re resist frock. Okay, but it's got weakness to fire because moon sugar is weakness to fire. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, it's expensive either way. Um, frost Miriam, grass pod, and spring and sap. That's not that. Let me go down to Sprig and Snap, which we only have one of. Um, then we've got Frost Miriam, Purton, Purple Mountain Flower, and Silver Side Perch. And we've got Frost Salts, Giant Lichen, and Hag Raven Feathers. Then we have Giant's Toad, Glowing Dust, and Glowing Mushroom. That's the best one, because they're all right next to each other. Boink! And that's one of the super fortifying health potion effects, because Giant's Toad has a has a multiplier on it, a money multiplier on it for its fortify health effect, which is why it is used in the most expensive potions uh, before Salmon Row turned up on the scene. Uh, the next one is Glow Dust and Nightshade, and also Human Heart, but we don't have one of those, so we'll just do one of these because we've got plenty of both of those anyway. Um, then we've got Glowing Mushroom, Pine Thrush Egg, and Saber Cat Tooth. Cool. Uh, grass pod, large antlers, and river betty. Alright, then hag raven claw, snow berries, and swamp fungal pod. We're almost through the list now. <laughs> Half an hour to 45 minutes later. Um, then hawk beak, small pearl, and wisp wrappings. Then we've got hawk feathers, lunar moth wing, and vampire dust. L is for lunar. Hawk feathers, yeah, cool. Um, then we've got hissed carp, juniper berries, and Nordic barnacle. Uh, 
Um, then honeycomb, silver side perch, and skeever tail. Honeycomb, slaughterfish eggs, and thistle branch. You'll find tonics, salves, poultices, and potions on my shelves. We're almost there. Um, human flesh, imstool, and mora tapanella. We don't have human flesh, but we can go imstool and mora tapanella and get a lingering damage health effect. Uh, ice wraith teeth, vampire dust, and white cap. Cool. Uh, Jaren Root, Crimson Nern Root, and Human Heart. An potion that, in, that has three effects, none of which we have. Uh, so Jaren Root is a one-of-a-kind ingredient that you get for a Dark Brotherhood assassination. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I guess they put this on the list to hypothetically say, hey, you, this is the most efficient way to make to reveal the ingredients, right? Um, Alright, Large Antlers, Torchbug, Thorax, and Wheat... Are we out of large antlers? We are anyway, we'll just do that then. Um, lavender, orange, dart wing, and slaughterfish egg. That's not an orange dart wing, that is. Um, then mud crab, chitin, snowberries, and thistle branch. That's a nice resist potion. Um, and then last but not least, orange dart wing, saber cat tooth, and slaughterfish eggs. Okay, alright. So now, in theory, we have revealed at least 90% of what ingredients do in Baseland Skyrim. Yay! So now that we have all these ingredients here listed, we technically don't need to uh, to look up what expensive potions are in theory to you know level or make cool potions. Uh, but what we are going to do now is we're going to re refer to a second list of potions <laughs> that I linked to in the guide, um, which is in Rabcor's crafting guide. If you go to the alchemist resource section, then he's got a handy short list of the the, uh, the most dear potions that you can use for increasing alchemy skill, and we're just going to go through them now. Um, so the first one, the highest value potion, is Garlic, Salmon Roe, and Nordic Barnacle. We don't have any Salmon Roe, so we'll skip that one. The next one is Giant's Toe, Bear Claws, and Hanging Moss, so we'll go up to the start. So Bear Claws are here, Giant's Toe, which we don't have too many of, is here, and Hanging Moss is here, so we're going to make that and that all right then the next one uh, is because now we're out of giant's toe we can't really make any more giant's toe potions the next one on the list is chorus eggs vampire dust and garlic or lunar moth wing so we've got chorus eggs um, so we've got garlic and vampire dust so we'll do that one first, once I find my way to Vampire Dust, there we go, one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll go back up. So Lunar Mothwing now, and then Garlic, and Chorus Eggs. Alright, and then the next one we have is... Uh, Dwarven Oil, Death Bell, and Salt Pile. So normally, this potion alone is enough to get me to 100 alchemy, uh, if I've hoarded the ingredients a lot, because usually I have a ton of all of these ingredients. Um, but I don't think I'm going to get there. Let's just see how close we go. We get to 92. Alright, so I'm going to have to get a bit crafty. Um, so then the next one is Creep, Cluster, Scaly, Foliota, and Mora Tapanella. So let's try that one. So Mora Tapanella. Scaly Foliota and Creep Cluster. Cool. Five off. 
Uh, the, the five effect potion is Bear Claws, Eye of Saber Count, and Hanging Moss, but we don't have any of them. So now we're moving on to individual effects. So we've gone through the uh, expensive the expensive potions, which are combinations of things, and now we're moving on to just what are the most expensive standalone effects. Uh, so examples would be stuff like Briarheart, Canis Root, that's used for paralysis. So now we'll start with this and then we'll go back. Oh, come on, this is so slow. Uh, and then we'll go to ingredients and see what technically we can mix with these two things. Um, so what else do we have that we can mix with these two things? Maybe glow dust. What does that help us do? Nothing at all. Ah, uh, oh, it only reveals it after you go through it. Uh, all right, blue mountain flower. You'll find tonics, salves, poultices, and potions on my shelf. So Canis root has paralysis, damage, stamina, and whatever. Let's just make some paralysis poisons. <laughs> We're not going to try and get too funky, are we? Uh, Briarheart, Canis root. Doesn't look like any of these things really share share things, which is a bit sad. Um, do any of them share damage magicka regen? Maybe nightshade. If we go to damage magicka regen, we go to nightshade. Does that do anything interesting? No, of course it doesn't. That's boring. Whatever. Anyway, so we finished making paralysis poisons using those things. Um, and then we'll make some more paralysis poisons using Imstool. Imstool Canis Root. Surely there's something else we can mix with these that's that is interesting. I swear there was a damage magic region thing you could do with these. No, I guess not. No, oh, damage stamina, sure. Alright. Um, then. Imstool, Swamp Fungal Pod, what is, so that does Paralysis Resist Shock, and this one does Lingering Damage Health. So they both do Paralysis Restore Health, so then we want Lingering Damage Magicka. There we go, that'll do. Oh, actually, I want to save them. Cool, um, and then we're two points away. So that's Paralysis out of the way, then we want to go to Damage Magicka regen. Um, and we should have, there we go, Blue Mountain Flower and Nightshade. That should be enough to get us to our... Boom! Alright, we made it to 100 Alchemy. At long last, um, and we still, I mean, we got a massive $22. Yeah, so let's at least make some of our dollars back. And then what we might do, because now we are quite short on Alchemy ingredients, and we will still need some Alchemy ingredients for what we want to do moving forward... Uh, yeah, so as you can see, maxing alchemy gets you a boatload of potions worth a lot of money. So if you thought that the uh, if you thought the banished Deidre daggers were a cash cow, uh, alchemy puts puts enchanting to shame. Uh, but the catch with alchemy, of course, is that you kind of need prior investment into alchemy skill in or and also a bunch of ingredients in order to get all of these potions worth this amount of money. Uh, so, the way that this guide does it is that we use enchanting to make money while we maximize enchanting, and then once enchanting is maxed, then we use that to get alchemy training and make an alchemy fortification set, and then when we act max alchemy out, uh, we end up with all these nice potions that we can sell. So yeah, sort of building upon itself type effect. Um, so, what I might go and do now is I might go home and put all of this junk in the chest and then we'll do a couple of run rounds of the alchemy trading route uh, just to show you guys what that is so that we can stock up on some alchemy ingredients and then we'll call it a video so yeah this is unfortunately a bit of a more boring video as far as the videos go um, but it is what it is <laughs> This should be, in theory, one of the last boring videos <laughs> that we have to do. We, we ticked off, again, quite a, quite a few things. Uh, so we made our first our alchemy set, and we finally got alchemy to 100. Uh, what we can do, I guess, is we can make our final crafting set, but we might wait until next video to do that, um, because I want to make sure that we've got enough alchemy stuff for 
late game shenanigans, um, and I forgot to get stamina again. <laughs> uh, Alright, next level we'll get stamina, I promise. Wait, and now we can walk. Um, what else are we carrying? Because I can go back. I guess just crafting stuff. Um, so crafting stuff can go back in here. Uh, iron ore, iron leather strips. What the hell? We should we should soul trap some people and put them in black soul gems because we keep forgetting to do that. Uh, the staff of Magnus can go back to its rightful place. Uh, you know what we need to do? We need to get all of our apparel that's uh, in the castle. Whoops. <laughs> so let's go do that uh, before we do anything. Heard about you and your honey words. Oh, friend. Um, so hopefully this container hasn't reset, because uh, we put quite a lot of stuff in here. I as much as the next uh, man, don't think I it will have. So we go around here, sneak, and yeah, it's all still here. Yoink. Alright, cool. And that includes our iron daggers, which we're probably never going to bother to enchant again, because now we have money coming out of our ears from other methods. Um, still here. So, yeah, we'll go dump that at home, and then we'll go on a little bit of an alchemy buying spree, and then we'll call it a video. You know what? Let's go kill a dragon. It's been ages since we killed a dragon, and we're going to need more dragon bones. So we might go and kill a dragon, and then go on our alchemy buying spree. Um, because we're level 53 now, the dragons should be ancient, which means that they'll be significantly tougher than we remember. Uh, but we have two summons to deal with dragons now. We haven't we haven't killed a dragon using two summons yet, uh, because it has quite literally been that long since a dragon showed up. The last dragon that we fought was a blood dragon at about level 30. And for whatever reason, just dragons have not appeared um, for about the last 10 hours of gameplay, which has been very unsettling but um, I would much rather they showed up. So let us go and kill a dragon. Now we're heading towards Dawnstar, so perhaps... You know what, we've revealed Shear Point. Let's just go to Shear Point. There'll be another dragon at Shear Point that we can, that we can beat up. There we go. Hi, dragon. Um... Let's equip all our items again, because we've still got our alchemy crap on. Um, so, fighting stuff, we have Archmage robes, mid-game equipment, which includes this silver ring, which we forgot to name, Saras Avon's amulet, and Mage Circlet. And because we are fighting a dragon, we want to summon Storm Atronax, which are pretty much almost exclusively used to fight dragons and nothing else, so let's summon them now. And for some reason, this is a blood dragon again. Um, so let's let's maybe go to the uh, graybeards. Because we should we should be realistically fighting high level dragons now um, than this guy. We should be fighting ancient dragons. Yeah, 
So there you go, that's our fire resistant boots in action. not be taking off anymore, uh, but we deal enough damage to it that I probably don't need to bother summoning an Indra Mora Lords, the Atronax are doing enough. Alright, and it's dead. Kill. One bone, that's sad. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of want to fight a better dragon. And I'm not getting a soul from it either. So, uh, yeah, double bad. Uh, let's go and find <laughs> another dragon, shall we? Uh, what we can do, what's a quick place to find a dragon? Maybe back here, actually. Quick place to find a dragon's over here. So near, um, near the Statue of Meridia, which we probably should have visited quite a while ago, um, is a word war with one of the elemental fury shouts at it. Um, so yeah, let's go there. So that is the uh, statue of Meridia. We could go and do the Meridia's Temple Quest uh, if we wanted. Actually, what the Meridia's Temple Quest is good for are Grand Souls. Um, because all of the corrupted shades inside Meridia's Temple will give you Grand Souls. So in theory, we could go and hoard Grand Soul Gems and then go and plunder the temple and just get ourselves a boatload of Grand Souls. Um, but we won't do that just yet, I don't think. Um, all we want to do is fight a dragon um, that hopefully is something above the level of blood dragon and hopefully gives us a better soul, or hopefully gives us a soul because the last one gave us no soul, which was uh, very sad. Anyway, so this is a temple to Meridia, so I'll just reveal this location. Look at my temple lying in ruins. So much for the constancy of mortals, their crafts and their crafts. Uh, that's a random Thalmor agent. They love me not. How can my love reach them? There's supposed to be a dragon here, and there isn't, so that's unsettling me a bit. Alright, hand over your valuables. Double like a fish. Uh, no, how about you go away? Again. Yeah, go away. Don't you walk away. Maybe we'll have to try going to another dragon keep to find another dragon. Goodbye. All right. Cool. All right. Um, where else do we find a dragon that's nearby? Could go to. There was one kind of near Labyrinthian, but I think you kind of had to run the long way around to get to it. Uh, there's one round here that we could go to, but then I'd have to run up from Sarthal, and that's not ideal. Um, whatever. Let's just try this one. So yeah, what are we doing now? We're just running around the countryside trying to find a dragon um, because we need dragon bones. We remembered for our for our late game items, and because we haven't seen a dragon for a while, which is which has been nice um, because it means that we have not had to waste time killing dragons in towns. But it also means that we haven't collected enough dragon bones for what we want. And of course, now you've got stuck on absolutely nothing. Thanks. So yeah, we're going to go off and try and find another dragon. Um, and with any luck, we find an ancient dragon and not a crappy blood dragon, because the last dragon we fought was a blood dragon, uh, which spawned up to a roundabout. Ooh! Alright, so 
Okay. They are gargoyles, which are a Dawn Guard enemy. Um, we haven't really engaged much with Dawn Guard at all, actually. <laughs> Uh, this playthrough. Uh, the Lost of the Ages quest, which we'll do next video, uh, technically is a... technically something that comes with Dawnguard. Uh, this gargoyle is healing a lot, which is a bit irritating. Gargoyles drop uh, a bunch of gems and ores for reasons, and uh, we found a frost troll. Of course, we did. Um, yeah, all right. I'll let you guys deal with that. Thanks. Right, so there's a dragon in this direction. Um, so the quickest way to get to the dragon is... Which way? That's the way to the Statue of Azura. Uh, I think we kind of need to do both, and of course. Hello. So yeah, Statue of Azura, how do you get there? Uh, if you want to do the Azura's quest, you kind of got to go over here to the Sightless Pit and then walk around the mountain. And uh, if we wanted to get to the Dragon Lair, we kind of need to go in this direction anyway, so let's just head this way. Resummon Beavis and Butthead, in case they run out. And then we go, this little dragon, a little dragon place there, whatever you call that. Dragon Keep, Dragon Mountain. Dragon Lair, Dragon Stuff, um, so yeah, there goes, there's a dragon, that's encouraging, um, alright, and we're going to go and fight that little dragon, who is hopefully not a crappy blood dragon, but a, a more powerful and fun to fight ancient dragon that we can test our skill on a bit better. Um, but now in our luck it's like flown over the mountain and is busy trying to fight goats or something. Hey, it's an ancient dragon. Alright, good. Let's go. Hey man. Frost or fire? You're fire, that'll be interesting. Alright, so yeah, this is the first time that we fought a proper dragon at our level with with dual summons, so yeah. Twin Storm Atronax versus Dragons are quite nice. Um, they're also potent Storm Atronax now because we have the Elemental Potency perk, which means that they're a little bit tanky more than anything. Uh, and so hopefully, once we chip this guy down a bit, uh, we'll be able to see something cool about fighting dragons with Twin Storm Atronax. Because uh, we didn't really have the time to witness it before, because they died so quickly. Um, And yeah, it's gonna fly off and be annoying. So. Jesus. Um, let's summon you guys again. Uh, I'm not a fan of this dragon just like running in this direction. Um. 
For some reason these Storm Atronachs are forgetting how to shoot it with lightning, which is a bit annoying. They're just hitting it. It's kind of not what I want them to do. No, that's wrong. Oh, you know what? We have 73 archery now, so we can, uh, we should have done this a while ago. <laughs> Sweet. There we go. Oi! Huh? <laughs> We got to witness it for a second. Uh, so what happens with the frost at with the uh, storm atronax is that uh, lightning damage damages magicka reserves, um, and uh, dragon shouts that they use use magicka. So against for some reason they this guy likes attacking me. Um, anyway, if you if you fight um, usually ancient, revered, and legendary dragons long enough between storm atronax, uh, their magicka reserves get damaged to the point that they can't use shouts on you anymore. They just, they kind of just get stuffed, and that's exactly what's happened. Uh, he didn't get to use his shout for a bit. Um, now he's landed, um, so we'll just take him apart and then uh, leave him at that. You could summon Dramora Lords at this stage, uh, but he is, he is doing a fine job of tanking it up. So we don't really need to. Alright, next. Thanks. Three bones? Nah, one bone. Sad. Alright, um, come here, Lydia. Do we get a soul this time? Yeah, we do get a soul this time. That's nice. Alright. Right what did I just... I took her mace. Um, she borrow a war axe. She can have a war axe back, and she can have some... bones. Why not? Okay. Yeah, in hindsight, I shouldn't have sold the uh, the five the five dragon bones that we got from the skeletal dragon in Labyrinthian. Uh, but if I'd known that we weren't going to be fighting any dragons in towns, uh, I wouldn't have done that. Because usually, by this stage of the game, you've fought you know probably ten more dragons than we have. <laughs> uh, ah, we got stage two of the ice form shout. Cool. Uh, so now, if you come here, you get a, you get an even longer ice form. Uh, not that we really need it, uh, but if you if you wanted you could come here and get that. Alright, um, so now let's go and do the alchemy route, starting with here. And I think then we'll call it a video. So yeah, what is the uh, second travelling salesman alchemy route. Uh, so you visit this place first, which hopefully is open this time. <sighs> anyway, um, in theory, that's open, and then you go down to Morthal. Gift. Not quite. Jorgen and I both work hard. So you're interested And then in you buy her ingredients yeah. and sell her some stuff. Sure. Mm. And then the next place on the destination is Solitude. So we go up to Solitude. Yeah. Huh? 
and buy your stuff. So you're an alchemist then. And sell you a random potion. One is enough. Cool. And then we go to Markarth next. Good afternoon. Um, and when you get to mark up, it will be quite late. Um, so normally, you fast travel usually a bit slower, but for some reason this game, fast travelling speed is, obs is obscenely fast. Um, but normally you get here like 2, 3 a.m. and you have to wait until 8, so that's what we're going to do. One more hour. And it should be open now, thanks. And this time we're going to take fatigue. Fatigue, stamina. So, yeah, at this stage of the game, if I was following the guide properly, uh, I'd get health to 500, and then I would get fatigue, I'd get stamina from 100 to 200, and the reason for that is because it gives you a little bit more stamina to play with if you decide to muck around with weapons uh, in the late game. Because it helps having a little bit more stamina to, you know, do, do extra power attacks and stuff. It's just a nice quality of life, and uh, 100 health at this stage of the game does not really mean that much. <laughs> you, are, you are basically past the point where where you're going to get one shot, and so, in theory, if you lose health, then you should have enough time to heal up using potions or spells. Uh, that's pretty pretty much the point of the health bar, really. Um, because you have enough time to react and heal yourself in the majority of cases, all you need is enough health to survive up to the point where you can react and heal yourself, uh, which we now have. So, Then after that, we're going to go all the way over to Riften, which will take about a day. And we should be here, yep, about 9am, so now we can go to this alchemy place. Now, there is actually one more destination that, you, that I could put on the second alchemy travelling salesman route that I didn't put in, and that is Windhelm, because Windhelm has an alchemist uh, that I completely forgot about when I was making the travelling salesman route. Uh, so we might... I might get around to changing the picture and the and the diagram for that in the guide at some stage. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't go there, but it is slightly more efficient. Um, so we'll buy all this crap. And then sell you a potion. Or three. Maybe that one. That'll do. Cool. And then now I can't move. It's a bit sad. Uh, you can carry some scales as well. There we go. Cool. Alright, and then we go to Windhelm. And then you buy the alchemy ingredients from there, and then finally you end up at Dawnstar, and then you start again. And uh, we might actually just see before we before we finish this video whether or not we can get Dawnstar to um to respond <laughs> to our yeah the alchemy place should still be open. See if we can get the Dawnmire alchemy shop to actually freaking open. Um, so yeah, you can come over here to the white file and then trade alchemy ingredients with this guy. So I should stick this one on the on the alchemy route, um, but I keep forgetting. That's not what I want. Ingredients. Cool. Buy all this crap. And then 
can sell him a couple of potions, maybe three of them for a discount. Cool. To see you again soon. And then finally we head back to Dawnstar and we wait. And so that's basically the second, the alchemy. The alchemy route is what we just did then. So the first travelling salesman route that we covered in previous videos was mainly for smithing and enchanting stuff. The one that we just did then was for alchemy. Uh, so destination one is Dawnstar, destination two is Morthal, destination three is Solitude, then you go to Markarth, then all the way to Riften, then to Windhelm and back to Dawnstar. Um, Windhelm is not mentioned explicitly on that. Ooh, that will be waited too long. Um, Windhelm is not explicitly mentioned on that route. Um, but it is there. Um, I will, when I get around to it, up, update the diagram and the list on the guide. Are you open yet? Yay, we're open! The mortar and pestle makes potions, if you can't tell Fuck me, your work ethic's bad, Frida. Alright, what have you got? Take a look. Oh, that'll do. Alright. Let me know if you come down with the rack. So yeah. Alright, so now we should, in theory, have enough ingredients to do everything we want to do in alchemy. Um, so now we will head back to White Run and we will collect the ingredients that we need to make um, to make fortify smithing and fortify enchanting this potions. Because we are happened. going to need those. Um, if we want to craft stuff in the future, so we'll do all this in the next the next video. I oh, won't worry about this all just yet. Um, but for the moment, we'll put everything back in here. This has been very much an admin video, hasn't it? <laughs> One hour and 40 minutes of uh, mashing potions together and, and fighting dragons because we could. Anyway, the next, the next uh, video we will go off and we'll try and rush our way through the um, Lost to the Ages quest. I might even try and speed run the locations. Uh, because I haven't done a speed run of a location before, um, but we can theoretically do that, so we might just do that because we can. Um, so we need um, Fortify Restoration and, oh sorry, Fortify Smithing and Fortify Enchanting. So Fortify Enchanting Ingredients, we need what? We need Blue Butterfly Wings, we need Hag Raven Claws, We need snowberries and we need sprig and sap. 60 snowberries, that's encouraging. And then we need sprig and sap, cool. All right, and then for fortify smithing, we need blister wart, glowing mushroom, and saber cat tooth. Uh, we don't have any saber cat tooths, so we should hopefully have enough glowing mushroom and blister wart, which we do. All right. Cool. All right. So for the purposes of this video, we should have enough. Uh, fortify restoration is something else that we'll come to another time uh, right at the end, but we won't worry about fortify restoration just yet because that effect breaks the game. Um, so yeah, that is enough for now. We have got our alchemy to 100. We've got um, we've got all the materials that we need now to get all the crafting skills to 100. So basically what we need to do next uh, is we need to make our final crafting set and then we also need to do the Lost to the Ages quest. So I reckon next video we're going to try and get both of those things done in one go. And then we'll be almost at the stage where we can start making late game items. All right. Thank you very much, guys. We will save it here. Um, yeah, this video was a little bit, <laughs> little bit of a drag, but um, 
once again, it's necessary. Uh, if, you ever, if you've ever done alchemy before, unfortunately alchemy is a very time consuming thing, uh, unless you're making very specific potions, and I went out of my way in this video to try and explain how you would best make use of the knowledge from alchemy by revealing all the ingredients and then trying to get alchemy to 100 based on what you have in your inventory, um, going through different lists of effects, and using different resources. So I will link everything that I used in this video in the description and we'll leave it there. Thank you very much guys and I hope you have a great day.